Well, hello there. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded, uh, but hopefully you can forgive me as I bring you some Football Manager 2019 gameplay that I recorded over the weekend at SI Studios. I also wanted to shout out the team at SI and thank them for inviting me and a load of other Football Manager content creators down to their studios over the weekend to record some Football Manager gameplay. In this save, I am going to be taking over Pausa for one season only as I try to uh, get us promoted from League One and I'll show you some of the new features that are in the game this year. I have to admit, the first thing is, I don't know whether to say I'm experienced at the game or inexperienced because technically I've played the game a long time, but I've never won anything. So what do I actually click? Also, I wanted to add my manager's picture into the game, but I don't really have any pictures on me other than one of me in a Christmas hat. So that's going to have to do for now. I know we're two months away from Christmas, but I mean, today feels like Christmas. Now we move on to my managerial style, and unfortunately I don't see loser or relegator on there, so we're going to have to pick something different. I, I'm looking at like motivator or youth development, but then again, I don't do either because I don't get into a save long enough. Uh, so I think we're going to stick with knowledgeable, because I am quite knowledgeable, of the job center. One of my new favorite features in this football manager, and is going to be a very popular feature among many, is the new training section. And I like the fact that in the match prep, there is a section that allows you to do match review, which will be great when we get tonked 8 0 away from home in the third game of the season and then I have to go and review it all over again. And I'm not going to lie to you, the screen looks absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at the color coding. Although the fact that I am in pre season, so all the colors are the same at the moment. But wait until I get about two months into the season, and then we'll see how colorful it is. The press conferences looks a lot better now and it actually looks like you're in the room with a load of journalists um, actually having a press conference rather than having to act it out in the bathroom in front of the mirror. And one of my little subtle changes they made with the press conferences is that if you change the mood of how you're saying something, it actually changes the colour on the screen. So for example, assertive is blue, but if you're saying it cautiously, it's yellow. It's fantastic. And going back to training, it also allows you to edit the training schedules for the next two weeks within your inbox, which is fantastic because sometimes people just want to do the quick edit in the inbox and then move on. Some people might want to go to the training screen and do it a bit more meticulously, but I mean, that's a great feature for me as well. And with the new changes to training, it also allows you to get a training week in review and then see who's not training well and who is training well. And as I can see, my striker Ollie Hawkins isn't training very well, so we're going to have a conversation with him to say to step up his game, otherwise he's not going to play. Okay, so me and Ollie have just had a conversation and we've fallen out, so that means I'm selling him now. Now, moving on to some key players that Pauls will have who will hopefully lead me to some success in this little mini-series. Uh, first of all is Matt Clark, a centre-back who is already of championship standards and has the potential to go even higher. Uh, but if you can hold on to him in the first season and then get promoted, you have a very good player on your hands. Partnering alongside him is Jack Watmore, a centre-back who is also very young and uh, has a very good stats on him and has the potential to go even higher than the level he is at. The only problem is his contract runs out at the end of the season, so you have to tie him down as quickly as possible before clubs start sniffing around and he may want to leave. Moving on to the attacking options, we have Jamal Lowe, one of the key players who led Port of out of League 2. Uh, in the season that they won the league. Uh, he is a right winger and his stats are very, very, very good uh, at this level and uh, a lot better than previous versions. So he may be one of the key players if you play wingers. And on the other wing is Ronan Curtis, one of the newer signings for Portsmouth. He's a right-footed left winger, so he will cut inside a lot. But hopefully you can get him to dribble down the wing because his dribbling and his finishing stats, once again, are very good for this level. And finally, we move on to uh, the number one striker, hopefully for you, but definitely for me, is Brett Pittman, a uh, top goal scorer last season, and his stats are a lot better. He can also play as a number 10, which I may use him as more than a, an actual number 9, but we'll see over the course of the season. But once again, his stats are very good for the position that he plays and the role that he will probably play for you. We also managed to get the hardest game out of the way by beating my under teams by three goals to one. I mean, we also beat some small team called Marseille 3-1, but I don't think you will care about that one. Well, here we are. The first game I am going to take charge of Portsmouth in Football Manager 19. Uh, it's a big game, by the way. Uh, Luton Town at home, who have been newly promoted from League 2 last season. Uh, so this is going to be quite a difficult game to start off the season with. So I'll start off with the team. Uh, Craig McGillivray uh, will start off in goal. New signing for Shrewsbury Town over the summer. Uh, Anton Walks will start off at right back because Nathan Thompson isn't fit enough to make the bench. Uh, while Matt Clark and Jack Watmore are in centre-back, Lee Brown is at left-back. 
While Ben Close and Tom Naylor play in the two central midfield positions, uh, Jamal Lowe starts off on the right-hand side with Ronan Curtis on the left. Gareth Evans playing as the number 10, while Brett Pittman leads the line for us. And then we've got Luke McGee, Christian Burgess, Brandon Houndstrom, Ollie Hawkins, Adam May, Danny Rose, and Andre Green on the bench. A very strong team. A stronger team than I had last year when I managed Portsmouth. So, I'm excited. I am excited. Like, let's see if this team can actually play how I want them to play. Or if I'm just going to start off like I ended last year. And as we can see, Luton Town will set up in a 4-4-2 formation. Danny Hilton and James Collins lead in the line for them. Uh, Danny Hilton has been quite a good player for me in Football Major over the years. So, let's hope he doesn't score against me. Because that would be a bit embarrassing. And also, I don't want to start off the season with a defeat. Uh, let's get at least about four wins before I lose. Thank you very much. As you can see, the team tour screen is a lot better this year. We're now actually in the changing room, which means it has this sort of atmosphere that I am actually delivering a team tour, which may see my team get beaten 5-0. But we're going to say to the boys, show me what you could do. First game of the season. I know how these players play in real life, but I want to see how they can play under me. That's the biggest problem with being a Porsche fan and managing the club that you support. The 3D match engine is definitely a lot more improved this year. The lighting has helped a lot and it actually looks a lot cleaner. Uh, I'm actually really excited to be playing this in 3D this year. Uh, but we do have the first corner of the game and uh, Gareth Evans puts it in the box and it's headed out. But uh, Ben Close will pick up the ball. Uh, I'll be interested to see some of the new animations we have this year. And uh, talking about that, Evans into the box and it's headed out. As far as Ben Close, who shoots and it hits the bar. We go again. We got the first shot of the game. I'm happy with that. You know, baby steps. Uh, so far, it's, uh, so good, some would say. Uh, I'm not losing. That, that's, that is what I'm, I was a bit worried about. You know, new game, new me, hopefully. Probably end up losing anyway later on. Uh, we are starting off with a positive mentality, though. That is one of the new options this year. Uh, they've changed it, so now it's not overload. Uh, and attacking, etc. Balanced. It's more uh, positive, uh, attacking, cautious, defensive, very defensive. Uh, very defensive for when I'm uh, leading 1 0 in the next 20 minutes. We do have a lot of options on the bench as well to change around uh, last year. I, I know Porsche's squad depth last year was one of the main reasons why we didn't do as well in the league. Uh, and this year we've improved it a lot, which means that now I can benefit from that with the amount of squad depth that we have. It's high pressure in football. Gareth Evans, Brett Pittman, Jamal Lowe's in on goal. Jamal Lowe scores the first goal under my reign as Porter Fanager. He does a little cartwheel in the corner. Jamal Lowe, the fantastic signing we've made from non-league, gives us the lead against Luton. And, uh, well, it's patient football. Gareth Evans finds Brett Pittman, who holds up the play to... Release Jamal Lowe and Jamal Lowe in at the near post past Marek Stek. It's a fantastic strike and a strike which means that we have taken the lead. I'm actually winning a game. Now, whether that's a bug in football manager remains to be seen. I mean, our goalkeeper Craig hasn't even touched the ball yet, as far as I know. I hope he's having a wonderful time at the other end of the pitch. Uh, Luton haven't really done much, but as I say that, they're throwing goal on James Collins. Oh, it's a good save by Craig. We'll applaud him for that. It's, he's tipped it around the post. He's not had to do much this game so far, but when he's called to action, he puts it wide. We were very dominant in the first part of the half, but as the half has gone on, we've started to struggle a little bit. So we're going to tell the boys that, you know, you've played well so far. There's definitely room for improvement. They haven't reacted, which is not a surprise because I'm in charge here. Not really much has happened uh, so far as the half has gone on. Um, we're just uh, waiting for something to happen. Probably, probably my team are just keeping the ball for a lot of the time. I mean, we've got 63% possession so far, which is very good. Uh, it shows that the tiki-taka tactic that I've employed in this game is working. Uh, we're keeping the ball very well here. Gareth Evans into Jamal Lowe. It's 2-0. Jamal Lowe once again puts us in a very, very good lead. Another cartwheel in the corner. Uh, the fans go crazy. I'm going crazy in my seat right now. It's great football, though. Jamal Lowe, once again, a through ball, and he makes the run into the box and fires it home past the goalkeeper and uh oh this is a new animation and uh well they were checking if there was offside Jamal Lowe definitely not offside I mean if that was given then I'll be having words with the FA and uh Luton have a free kick in the edge and uh Sheehan is here over the bar Luton not really playing very well um I know they're a newly promoted team it'll be interesting to see how they actually perform this year because obviously one of the hardest games they could have probably had is against us uh, but we're going to send on Andre Green out wide uh, for Ronan Curtis. Andre Green, uh, one of our new loan signings from Aston Villa over the summer. I'll probably see more of him in the game than I will do in real life, which is 
bit of a shame. And uh, Brown finds Naylor here. Brown on the wing. Uh, Brown, one of our new left backs as well this year. Um, I'm excited to see how he performs. And Evans is a good stay by stick. Uh, we're going to turn on Ollie Hawkins up front. Well, we will be selling Ollie Hawkins actually soon. Uh, so this is more of his farewell game. You know, first game of the season is already saying farewell. But that's what happens when you're not training well and uh, you don't want to listen to me. You're out the door. And uh, Ben Close is uh, tackling. And I think Sheehan is going to be booked for the second time this game. Uh, Luton down to 10 men. I mean, he's saying that Ben Close has dived there, which I don't think he has. Luton down to 10 men. They're 2-0 down. And uh, we've headed the ball over. Ollie Hawkins, who has come on, has headed it over. Probably why I'm selling him. But it's been a very dominant performance. Uh, very dominant in terms of the scoreline. Very dominant in terms of the possession. And uh, very dominant in terms of how good I am at this game. I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but if I'm beating Luton Town, two goals to nil, you know, newly promoted with Portsmouth, who, by the way, have probably one of the strongest sides in the league, I will likely say I am one of the best managers in the game. And uh, Gareth Evans throws it in, and that is full time. We have won 2 0 at home on the first day of the season. Luton Town didn't even have a shot in the second half. That's how dominant we were. We get the ball 64% of the time and only got one yellow card. So, all in all, it was a great performance. I mean, roll on September when I'm probably 16th in the league and the board want to sack me already. But hopefully you've enjoyed uh, the first uh, taste of Football Manager 2019 on this channel. Uh, there will be a new episode of this save uh, every day this week at 6pm. And uh, wherever happens, uh, it will only be one season and then we move on to the beta save. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll see you tomorrow at 6pm. Whether I've still got a job remains to be seen.